Borada and welcome to the InstaSim channel. The name InstaSim probably implies something that I like simulators and I really really like simulators and I should be playing them more on my channel because that's what my name should imply. So here we have a simulator called PC Building Simulator. I have seen one gameplay video by Jack Semtikai on this video and on this game and so far it looks pretty good although there are a few nifts and stuffs that are not included yet but the game is in pre-alpha so I will give it a little bit of slack for now. Of course I'm hoping that the game will improve in the future. Now it does released about a week or two weeks ago so it's quite new as well as far as I know. Uh, possibly it's been about more than two weeks only but I'm not 100% sure I only saw it on the Uniland post on Facebook about it. Now, and I want to play it myself because it looks really, really good as it is so far. But I'm hoping that it will get better along the way. Apparently they've added cabling, whoever's made it. Account. So, let's go to the tutorial because the career is not available yet. And this game was made on Unity, which is pretty cool. So, let's go to the tutorial. Hi, and welcome to a PC building simulator. To get started with this tutorial, press I after you close this window to open your inventory. All the parts you own are shown in the inventory, along with the quantity you have. Close the inventory after you're done to continue with the tutorial. You can press T to toggle this window and Q to quit the tutorial. Okay, T, and then I. So I have £2,000, or $2,000 actually, so far, which is something I would probably really like to get, so I can actually build my own PC, because currently I don't have a PC, I have a laptop. And it's, it's a good laptop, but I would like to improve my setup. But I don't have the money yet, so... Uh, we're gonna have to do as what we have so far. Anyway, uh, all the items we have in the uh, dummy CPU, probably AMD. Uh, we have a thermal take smart 500 watt power supply, that's awesome. We have some thermal paste, we have an IO shield, which is really, really cool as well. And let's have a look. So let's uh, toggle the inventory. Okay. To get started building your computer, navigate to the miscellaneous category on the right and select standoffs. Standoffs are spaces installed between the motherboard and the metal tray behind it, so a short circuit is not created. That's a really good thing about it, because when you're building a PC, you don't necessarily want short circuits. You don't want to have the static build up inside your PC, and you don't want that to short circuit your motherboard. Otherwise, your computer will might as well be used as a door stopper. They are also the place. They are also the place the motherboard screws are installed in. Oh yeah, they are also the place the motherboard screws are installed into. Yeah, that's it. So, I let's go to miscellaneous, and let's go to the standoffs. We have ten of them. To install the standoffs, hover your mouse over the highlighted slots, and then press the left mouse button. These need to be installed in different holes depending on the motherboard you are planning to use in your build. The motherboard we will use has 80x form factor, and there these are the locations that align with the screw in the holes on it. So, I believe WSD to move, mouse button, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, let's install standoff there, let's install one there, 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 there. Now, I'm not sure about this one, because isn't that supposed to be one aligned with it as well? I'm pretty sure they're supposed to align perfectly. I think you only need nine, but we'll put the tenth in anyway, just in case. Because, oh well, this is popped up anyway, so we must have put them in the right place. But I'm not sure about... I haven't really built a PC before, but I am planning to, so this is going to help quite a bit. So, I'm not sure if they're all supposed to align perfectly, Well, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to, but, I mean, these the, people, the person who made this game is probably better at building PCs than I am. Before we install the motherboard, we need to install the power supply unit, or the PSU. This is the power source for everything in your computer. Open the inventory again by pressing I, select Thermal Take Smart 500 watts, hover your mouse over the highlighter slot, and left click to install it. Awesome source, let's do that. So it'll take smart and install. Hey, it's in. Now we are going to install the IO shield. Ah, oh, exciting. Oh, exciting IO shields. Super awesome. Uh, the IO shield serves the purpose of keeping the electromagnetic radiation inside the case so radios and similar equipment around the computer won't be disturbed. To install it, select it from the inventory under the miscellaneous category and install it in the highlighted slot. Okay. Let's go to the inventory, and the IO shield, which is I believe in miscellaneous, there it is, and let's install it. So this tutorial is pretty cool, it's pretty basic as well, I suppose. Right, now open your inventory again by pressing I, and select the motherboard you just bought, installed in the highlighted slot. 
Okay, now I just want to see the IO shield very quickly so we can see what it looks like. Uh, it's pretty basic, I guess. We also have these buttons we can press, which uh, rotates this thing. Oh yeah, there's that in the back there, which is the way you install a backplace if you're putting an aftermarket, aftermarket CPU fan. I know that because I've seen a video of someone building a PC before, so pretty basic stuff. Anyway, it's actually not that laggy, which is really good. I will try this on Ultra sometime, I possibly. I'm not sure if I'll try it for this video, but if they update the game, then I will make another video on the game. Let's go to the... Uh, where would it be? The motherboard? The Asus P8P67. I don't really know much about motherboards, uh, so... I, d I do know a bit. I know about the Z170s with the Intel LDA1155, is it? Or is it the sockets in them? Because I've been looking at parts for building a PC, but I'm not sure about everything about them. But I know that Asus motherboards are pretty good. So let's put an Asus motherboard in our PC. At this point, in real life, you would install the screws that hold the motherboard, being sure to have one in every standoff, but the parts in this game are held together by magic, so they don't require any screws. Well, that's awesome. I mean, magic is even better than screws, because it means you don't have to do manual labour to actually put them in. Anyway, next we are going to install the CPU. This is the component responsible for interpreting and executing most of the commands from the other hardware and software from the computer. Basically, it's the brain of the PC, which does all the calculations, of the addition, subtraction, and the multiplication. And I think all it does is subtract, multiply, and add zeros and ones, because it's all it works all in binary, I guess. I don't know. Well, I do know a lot about binary and things, but uh, I think that's what the CPU does. It just does multiplies things by zero and one, or adds and takes away zeros and ones, until it gets to this one. It wants, I think. I'm not sure. To do this, first open the slot. For that, click the highlighted part on the motherboard. That part is called load plate, and it's what holds some types of CPUs in place in their slot. Okay. So, what do we do? Just click. There we go. And that is the arm that actually raises that as well, which is really cool. Now to install the CPU, go to your inventory by pressing I and select the CPU for the CPU from its suspected category and install it in the highlighted slot. Then click the load plate again to close it. Okay. So we have a WCPU, which is probably an AMD one. I think. I would not know. I can't... Oh, I can zoom in. What is it? Um, I'm not able to read that, but okay. Never mind. Yeah, my laptop fans are going a bit weird, but never mind. Okay, close that. And I know what Jack Sebdikai said. He said, with that arm, don't, like, hesitate to put a bit of force on it. Because you do kind of need to put a bit of force so it actually goes in. If you've done it wrong, though, then your PC's dead, basically. You've killed your own PC before you even built it. But there we go. Now we will apply the thermal paste on the CPU. Thermal paste is a type of paste made from metal powder, usually zinc oxide. Sometimes aluminium oxide. Aluminum. <laughs> Aluminum, aluminium, aluminium nitrate, or even silver. That fills the very fine gaps between the cooler and the respective part for better thermal conductivity and better cooling. Select the thermal paste in your inventory and then click on the install CPU to apply it. You only need a dot, it will spread by the cooler itself. Okay. Yeah, you only like, I think what I remember Newegg saying or something like that was between the size of a pea and the size of a grain of rice. Something like that. Anyway. Thermal paste, I think we clicked it. Yeah, now we will install the CPU cooler. To do this, open your inventory, go to the cooling category, and select the stock cooler. Install it in the highlighted slot. Now, when I build my own PC, I will be using an aftermarket water cooler because they're awesomer and they cool a lot better and they'll keep all the parts nice and cool. The stock cooler is fine if you're doing very low intensive things. And an aftermarket CPU is pretty much required if you do if you're planning to do things like overclocking or something, then you will need an aftermarket CP, uh, CPU cooler. I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but I'm going to go through the entire thing anyway. Okay, stock cooler. Awesome source. Now we will install the graphics card. One thing my laptop has is a graphics card. It's got a GPU in it, a graphics processing unit, which is which allows me to play games at great. Uh, um, better, because otherwise with the Intel HD graphics you would not be able to play games very well. 
Uh, so I have got an NVIDIA GeForce GT 6635M. When I'm building my own PC, I'll be going for a 1070 G6, 1070 or 1080. Now we'll install the graphics card. The graphics card or video card is a part that takes information from the CPU and turns it into images, which is which it displays on the screen. It can be a separate part called a dedicated or discrete video card, like you are about to see here, or it can be built in the CPU called integrated video card. My processor has integrated graphics into it as well. But I have an aftermarket GPU as well, which it, with laptops, I think what it does is it uses the integrated graphics if you're not doing something intensive, and then when you're actually doing something like playing games, then it'll take go straight to the GPU. Whilst I'm playing this game, it's on GPU. If I was doing something else, it would be on the Intel graphics. Like if I was just surfing the internet or something. As a rule of thumb, dedicated graphics cards have more power than integrated ones, and they're used for GPU intensive applications like gaming or 3D modeling, like I just said. <laughs> To install the graphics card, go to Inventory, select it from the Graphics Card category, and install it in the high rated slot. Okay. Uh, an Asus GTX 680 Dark CU 2GB. That's just, that's a pretty good GPU, I suppose. 2GB is uh, quite good for pretty decent games, I guess. But I would recommend, a rule of thumb, go for at least 2 to 4 gigabytes of VRAM if you can. If you've got the money to splash out, go for 2 to 4. Maximum, well, 8, because 8 is probably the maximum you can buy. I don't know if you can go any higher than that, but I haven't really been checking too much on those. I think the tag next is 12, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, now we'll install the RAM, random access memory sticks. This is a type of storage in your PC which works very fast. Running programs are stored here to, for faster operation. If too many programs get loaded into the RAM, the CPU has to move them between the RAM and the HDD, which slows down the operation on the PC. To install them, first you'll have to open the pins, click on each of the highlighted pins once to open it. That's a pretty good feature, actually, because you'd have to do that anyway. Uh, the RAM is like temporary storage of what I've heard, so... When you're actually doing something, then your RAM is being used. So at the moment, my RAM is using OBS because I'm recording this and the game. Um, when I've closed those two down, then all that storage just goes onto the hard drive or it just disappears completely. Okay, so let's go into that. Okay, so we're going to use the black ones because black is awesome. I think we have four RAM sticks, but I'm not sure. I think we have four. We have four? We have four hard drives, apparently. Uh, where's the run? Oh yeah, we have four. Okay, so I'll put the four in. I'll zoom in. Zooming in is a bit slow. I would like that to be faster. Now that's like the models in your inventory and the memory category and install them in the highlighted slots. The pins will close by themselves as you push the model into the slot. You will also notice there are two different colors for the actual slots. These are called dual channel sets. You should install matching RAM models in matching color sets to take advantage of the performance boost they give, but generally you will want to install the same type of module across all your slots. So usually, what you get, if you have a, if you go for like 8 gigs of RAM, then you'll have 2 sticks of 4 gigs, but you can get 1 stick of 8 gigs. That's not uncommon. But if you go for 2 sticks, then I think, fingers crossed, I'm not 100% sure, but again, I'm not 100% sure about a lot of things for building PCs, because I've never done it before, like I've already said. What you'll see, I think if you use more RAM sticks, the more performance you get. Now we will install the hard drive, or hard disk drive. These are the storage devices that hold all your data, like your operating system, programs, photos, music, everything you have saved in your computer. Well, open your inventory and navigate to the storage category and select the HDD. Install it in the highlighted slots. Okay. Is it Seagate or is it Western Digital? Because I would always go for Seagate, but I don't know. Is this a hard disk? Lastly, we will install a fan in the back of the PC. Select it from the cooling category in your inventory and install it in the highlighted slot. Okay, I'm going to install all the four here, because it's... Uh, cooler. Okay, let's get to the... Where is it? Simple fan, I believe. Yep. The last part of this tutorial is cabling. To start doing it, press F1 and change to cabling mode. Yes, they've added cabling, which is awesome. Click every highlighted slot to install a cable there. If the connector you select fits, you will be presented with info about the specific cable. Now we're going to connect the hard disks on the back. Okay, so we'll do that as well. Anyway, F1 and cabling. So let's do some cabling now. So, this is the 24 pin. So, ATX, I believe that one is. The tiny 24 pins ATX power cable provide power to the motherboard and some expansion card. For example, low power dedicated graphics cards don't need an additional power connector. They don't get all the power they need directly from the motherboard. Okay. Um, we also need a PCI one, I think, or something. Is that, an, I think it's an 8 pin. Your PCI power cable with 6 pin or 8 pin connector used to provide additional power to the card. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that's also... 
like six pin. Yeah. Okay. So is it? No wait. That's yeah. That is a six pin. There we go. Anyway, Molex, I believe. Nope. Sutter. Okay, probably nothing. Oh wait, fan game movie. There we go, the fan. Okay, that's... Yep. That's got eight pins in it. So... Molex? No. Uh, that, there we go. EPS 12 volt power cable provides the additional power for the CPU. Okay, that's cool. That's Molex. No, it isn't. Damn it. Fan cable. Okay. Ah, yeah, the CPU fan. That's right. Yeah. I'm not sure what that one is, but... Because um, you've just tried it and there's nothing that shows it. Anyway. Let's connect all the SATA power cables to this. Now, I believe, if I remember correctly, though my memory is a bit dry, the small one is for the power. No, it isn't. Okay, so the small one is for the SATA. And the big ones for the power. Okay. SATA cable is used to transfer between devices and the motherboard. It's an update over the older IDE connector which support hot swapping, connecting and disconnecting devices while the system is running. And support higher data transfer rates which translates to faster read and write, oper read and write operations. And then that's for the power. There we go. The power is 15 pins. Cable is provide power to renew models. Okay, that's cool. Alright, you have finished assembling your computer and it's now ready to go. Press Q to finish the tutorial and start discovering things on your own. Okay. Q. And now let's discover some things done by ourselves. So let's just finish off this computer. We are at 20 minutes, but I think I'll be able to cut things out anyway. So first of all, let's go to mount. And let's go and put on the side panel. So we have a front side panel with a window, which is cool. Let's also put the back panel, which is that one. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Let's also put some disk drives. I know that most people don't usually put disk drives in the PCs, but I would put one because it'll be a lot more helpful if you had one. Because I do have quite a few things on disk which I may need. Now, one thing I forgot to do was actually to put the side things on. So I need to F1 and mount and take that off so that I can actually open these first. And open that. It's awesome. So let's install that. Now I'm not going to install one there, so I'll just close those. There we go. We can actually we have to actually close open it and close it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, let's mount and let's put a drive cover so that we can just do like that. There we go. That's amazing. We use thermal paste already, so we don't need more thermal paste. Oh, we've got two graphics cards. Oh, cool. Okay, so let's put the side panel back on. And let's put the back panel back on. And I think that's it. Now for the moment of truth. Have we done everything? If our computer works. Oh, we can't actually use it. But that's basically building a computer. And it looks quite nice, actually. It's not too bad. So... As a game, this is a very, very good game. You've also got a store, by the way. You can sort of just go shop for other things. Jesus Christ, that's expensive. But, uh, yeah, anyway. That's basics of building a PC. Uh, yeah, anyway. That was PC Building Simulator, and it's actually a really, really good game. In all fairness, it's really, really... It's very helpful as well. If you want to get into building PCs, then this will help you out a lot. It's got a big tutorial. It's got a quite a good tutorial in there as well, which it will help. And as far as I saw from the beginning of the game, they are working on a. Oh yeah, you can go to the main menu. Okay, let's go to the main menu. So let's go back to the menu. So they're working on career mode as well, which is pretty cool. And I would like to see what they do with the career mode, because um, if they actually do like a career mode where you actually where people actually buy PCs or something. That will be pretty cool. I really would like to see what they do with that. Anyway, PC Building Simulator. It's in pre-alpha. I will put the link to it in the description for people to go and get it. I will also be probably showing this to the developers of the game and give my suggestions. Finish the career mode. I want to see what it looks like. I'll give my suggestions for the career mode as well. I, w I would like to see what they do with the career mode. 
I'm not 100% sure yet what they're doing, because it says coming soon, obviously. We don't know what's going on. But that's the basics of the game. Just a tutorial and building a PC. Because, yeah, well, I, I actually would like to see where this game goes. And I would like to play it when it's updated again. So I will be playing it again. Don't worry about that. I won't be playing it in its current state. I'll wait until it's updated. But that's the game. So thank you all so much for watching. It's uh, fascinating. I would like to. I would like to see more of this game. It looks really good. I'm probably babbling on now. I need to finish the video because I'm at 25 minutes and it's getting long. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of PC Building Simulator. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, click on the down below, subscribe to the channel. It'll help me a lot when you get boys like this. Also, don't forget to like my Facebook, follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. But until then, goodbye.